the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro. What do you get? How does it perform? And is it right for you? This is a complete overview of everything you need to know about the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro. I'll be providing actual testing results and sharing my thoughts on what I like and dislike about this product. Hang with me for just a couple minutes to learn everything you need to know about the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro in one video. Welcome to the Solar Pit. And included in the box is the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro, the AC charging cable, the solar charging cable, the car charging cable, a user manual, and the warranty card. This power station has a 2400 watt pure sine wave inverter with 2150 watt hours of storage capacity. 13 total outputs plus a parallel connection and a battery expansion port. Three 120 volt 20 amp AC outlets, one 120 volt 30 amp RV outlet, one USB-A port at 12 watts max, two USB-A ports at 18 watts max, one USB-C port at 30 watts max, and two USB-C ports at 100 watts max. Has one DC car outlet, 126 watts, two DC 5521 ports at 50.4 watts max, a display screen, solar input, AC input, and the dimensions are 17 by 10 by 12, weighing in at 54 pounds. And the product warranty on the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro is a five-year product warranty. The inverter is a 2400 watt continuous output and a surge rating of 4,800 watts. During testing, I did put this claim to the test and this is what happened. And this was not able to complete a discharge from 100% down to 0% at 2,350 watts of continuous output. This is rated at 2,400 watts continuous output. What happened is we have an uh, over temperature sensor that's kicked on, shut down the system. And this happened at 37% into our discharge. Typically with power stations, they have these designs so the heat deprivation comes out and cools the internals down so you can discharge at the rated output that the inverter says it can. This one was not having a problem with actually doing the output. It has overheated so it doesn't cool off fast enough to allow this at a 2400 watt continuous output. So we did that at 37%. If you were running larger appliances and you need to do that for an extended amount of time, you're probably not going to be happy with the results. During testing, I was able to squeeze out 1,954 watt hours of capacity out of the 2,150 watt hours of the rated capacity, leaving us with an estimated inverter efficiency of 90.88%. And 90.88% is within the range of some of the best power station efficiency that I've tested. In my opinion, noise pollution is extremely important if you're gonna be placing a portable power station in an area where you might hear it operating. This one wasn't the quietest uh, power station that I've tested, but it was definitely not the loudest one either. It was somewhere right in the middle of that range coming in at 49 decibels at a decent charge rate. I tested the system over a 12 hour period to calculate the standby or no load consumption. And over that 12 hour period, the AC outlets were left on, including the screen left on always. And it used a total of 39% of the battery life. And this equates to 838.5 watts that was used over that period of time. And that's an estimated 69.87 watts per hour when left in standby mode. With the UPS function, if you experience a power outage while using this as a power backup, it will automatically switch from one power source to another power source in 15 milliseconds. And 15 milliseconds is about 25% faster than the industry average, which is 20 milliseconds. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the battery side of the inverter. This is equipped with LiPo4 battery cells, it does have that 2,150 watt hours of capacity, but there is the ability to expand the system using the optional expansion batteries that can take this up to 12,900 watt hours of capacity. Now, when we start talking about batteries, I like to talk about 
the life expectancy of the batteries and the cycles. So this has a rated 4,500 cycles to 80%, meaning that this power station, if used daily, can last around 12 and a half years and still have 80% of the original capacity. Now let's talk about the charging capabilities of the DBS 2100 Pro. On Dapson's website, they claim that this has the ability to accept 1800 watts of input. However, during my testing, I was unable to achieve anything over 1350 to 1360 watts of max input. Let's check that out. And although we have this set on fast charge, right here in the middle of the charge, we're only got an input of 428 watts. And that's been going on for a while. I thought it was just something that would slow the charge and then speed back up, but we haven't had that speed back up yet. So I do want to verify that we're on fast charge. So I'm going to take this down to slow and slow charge is 600 watts. So I'm not sure what's happening. And I'm gonna put this back up to fast charge and see if we can get it to activate into fast charge. But this is something I haven't seen anyone else identify. We've heard about fast charging at the end of the charge cycle, but we're right in the middle of the charge cycle and we're actually got an input of less than 600 watts, which is on slow charge. And I'm going to verify once more, we do have it on fast charge. And the DBS 1000 has never went back to a, a fast charge. It did this all the way from mid, all the way up to 98%. And I about guarantee it's going to do it for the rest of it because usually they start slowing down around this period rather than so early on. I'm not sure why that done that. And I'm not sure why other people are not talking about it, but I've got a slow charge for the entire process almost. Early on, it was around 1,350, 1,360 watts. But as I got over that 40%, it went down to this and it never did get any more input than that. And this is why it's important. It's taken almost three and a half hours to get up to 98% from 0% to 98%. And now that we've reached the 98%, I've dropped down to 108 watts of incoming power. So now it's gonna take an additional almost, let's say 20 minutes, maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes from this point to get to 100%. So this is charging extremely slow even though we have it set to fast charge on the box itself and within the app. I have found no settings that tell me that this should be charging at a slow rate. And this thing just keeps confusing me because now it's jumped back up to 440 watts when it got to 99%. Now it went back to 170. Now it's zero watts. Now it's 100. <laughs> so... It's strange how this thing actually charges. It gets there, but it does take a lot of time to do it. And the question is, how much power did it take to charge up 2,150 watt hours on those batteries when we converted it from AC to DC? It took 2,556 watts to store the 2,150 watt hours of capacity. So let's get back to the other options that you have to charge this up. You can charge it up with solar. It does have an MPPT range of 11 to 60 volts and a maximum of 25 amps, giving you a total max input of 1200 watts that is rated for the input on the uh, MPPT. And this is not unique to the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro, but these portable power stations are putting in this MPPT range of up to 60 volts and only 20 to 25 amps. I cannot add two large solar panels to this to produce more than what I'm producing right now, which I got to connect it to a 400 watt solar panel, but I only got it to one. It's cloudy outside, so that's why I'm only producing 241 watts. 
But if I try to put two of those on here, then I'm going to be over the voltage range in series. I would be at 72 volts. If I try to put two of those in parallel, then I'm going to be over <laughs> the amp range at 28 amps. So uh, if you're just offering me a number to say is 1200 watts of input, it's going to be very hard to reach that under these circumstances when you're using these larger panels like most of us might want to do. Now, this might work out if you have those smaller solar panels, you can series and parallel to try to max it out as much as possible. But the most practical way of doing this is to do it with larger solar panels. And I can't do that on a Datsun DBS 2100 Pro. All portable power stations have some sort of limitations. Understanding those limitations before purchase will ensure you're buying the right power station for your needs. The Dapson DBS 2100 Pro did disappoint in a couple of my testing results. Although the Dapson DBS 2100 Pro is rated to fast charge at 1800 watts of input, I was unable to verify that it could fast charge at anything over 1360 watts. My biggest concern was not being able to discharge at a full 2400 watts of continuous output, although the power station is ready to do so. It overheated not long into that test. So the bottom line is that the Datsun DBS2100 Pro did not meet my expectations and disappointed in two categories that landed this power station in the pit of shame. And if you're an owner of the DBS2100 Pro, let me know if you're experiencing the same characteristics or is this just something that I have wrong with this unit? I'm curious to hear from other owners to find out, is this an isolated problem or is this a widespread problem? And if you found value in this review, you might find this one helpful also. So be sure to check that one out and I hope to catch you in my next one.